I don't know if you've ever uh, gone to uh, a mall and uh, in your car looking for a place to park and uh, finding almost no places at all. And there's a story told about a shopper who did that same kind of thing, went to the mall, and for 20 minutes was driving up and down every aisle there was trying to find a place to park. And after 20 minutes, the shopper was was so aggravated that uh, she prayed to God. She said, God, she looked up to heaven. She said, God, if you find me a place to park, I'll go to Mass every week the rest of my life. And miraculously, a space opened up. And she looked up to heaven. She says, never mind, I just found one. (laughs) Well, we could ask the question today, I think, and it comes from, from the scriptures, you know, how do you judge success? How do you judge, you know, is that successful, that kind of a thing, finding the parking spot? Last week, you remember, in the scriptures, in the gospel, Jesus cured the woman who had suffered from hemorrhaging for some 14 years. And he also raised a dead child to life. That was last week's gospel. And you remember then that Jesus was the talk of the town? He was praised by all, sought by everyone. The day he comes home, and he's rejected. So was Jesus successful? Are we successful as a church? Is St. Bernard successful as a parish? Is each one of us successful as a disciple of Jesus? How would you judge that? You know, if this were a sports team, we would be judged by our one loss record. If we were a business, success would be judged by the bottom line. Do you make any money? If we were a theater, we could count the number of people in the audience each evening. But how do you judge a church? How do you judge a parish? Most people, I suppose, would look at uh, the church's attendance, the statistics. How many members do you have? You know, are you a mega church with thousands of members? How much money are you bringing in? What's the value of your real estate? What's the size of your buildings? What's, the, the, what's your budget? They, they look at all that to say, well, that's successful. But how do we really measure the success of a church? How do we measure the successful follower of Jesus, you and me? Remember that Jesus prepared his disciples not for success, but for rejection and failure. We saw that today. He says that that our calling is not to succeed. Our calling is to be faithful. So how do we measure our faithfulness? How do we measure our fidelity? I'd like to, to, to put three things before you. First, it seems to me that the successful church... The, the faithful church, the successful disciple, the faithful disciple might be measured by our downreach, our downreach. See, the church exists to carry on the ministry of Jesus, to continue his work in the world. That's what we're supposed to do. And Jesus' work was to reveal God's love to all people. No one was too lowly for God's love. Jesus said that someday we're going to have to answer for whether or not we have fed the hungry, clothed the naked, visited the sick, reached down to the the needy. He said, what you do to, to the least of my brothers and sisters, you do to me. And so today, perhaps, one of the things that we might think about is what's our attitude towards immigrants? Too often in our country today, there's that idea, don't let them even come in, send them back home, block the borders. What, how do we care for immigrants, those that are rejected by most people? Do we reach down to them? There's a wonderful example, you know, of forgiveness. Remember just a, maybe two weeks ago, the man that walked into the black church in the south shot nine people dead. And when he was arraigned before the judge, their relatives came and spoke to the judge. Did you hear what they said? Person after person after person said, I really don't like what you did, but I forgive you. I forgive you. I forgive you. I forgive you. Over and over and over again. 
reaching down to the lowliest. Could we do that? Is that what Jesus asks of us? So, if we are to be successful, if we, if we are to be faithful, we need that downreach, okay? Then secondly, it seems to me that the, the successful church, the successful disciple, the faithful church, the faithful disciple, is measured by its outreach. Jesus said to us, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. The church of Jesus Christ is a family. We're all sisters and brothers here. And we have to invite others into the family. Do we do that? The gospel message is that there's a place at God's table for everyone. Everyone is welcome to the table. So do we reach out to bring others to the table? Your family members, relatives, friends, your neighbors, do you invite them? Come to church with me. There's room at the table. The church is for everyone, including the disreputable, the worst sinner, the losers of every description. But how strongly does our light shine in the everyday world? Most polls today say that Catholics think the same as everyone else, even about such things as abortion, euthanasia, assisted suicide, the death penalty, the necessity of marriage, whether or not it is important to worship on Sundays. We don't have any different ideas than anybody else in the world. So what has happened is the world is changing us. We're not changing the world. Are we bringing the message of Jesus to the world? Is it heard loudly and clearly? Apparently not here in the United States anyway. We think the same as everybody else. So what's our outreach like? Are we really the light of the world and the salt of the earth? Do we really make a difference according to the gospel of Jesus, the teaching of Jesus? Is that foremost in the way we relate to the people of this world? And then finally, the successful church, the successful apostle, the faithful church, the faithful apostle, is measured by our upreach, our upreach. Our first priority is to worship our God. Now, I've mentioned it here as number three, but it really is our first priority. Because until we have met God in worship, we have nothing to bear witness to. If you don't know God, how are you going to explain him? How are you going to bear witness to him? you got to know God first. And until we have experienced the word of God in worship, we have nothing to say. If you don't know God's word, how can you tell others of God's word? Until we have received sacramental nourishment in worship, that is, in the scriptures and in the body and blood of Jesus, we have no power to love or to serve as Jesus did. Worship is where we and God meet in Jesus Christ, right here. Unless we have a connection to God, nothing we do matters. So this is our first priority. So I think, dear friends, that's how the church and the disciple should measure success. That's how we should measure faithfulness. That's how we should measure our fidelity, our downreach, our outreach, our upreach. Sometimes, you know, the followers of Jesus, especially too often in our parishes, we, we get so wrapped up in ourselves, in comparing ourselves one with another, in petty squabbles, in self-centered anxiety about unimportant things. We get all hot and bothered about some of this stuff. So don't you see, our calling when all is said and done, our calling is not to succeed, at least not by the world standards. Our calling is to be faithful. And the Lord who calls us goes with us every step of the way. So let's pray today that we can truly be successful as followers of Jesus. We can truly be faithful followers of Jesus.